opportunity to speak here. Uh, so, uh, earlier Professor Trivedi introduced uh, some compactly supported real valued uh, continuous function uh, called the Hilbert Kunz density function to study Hilbert Kunz multiplicity. So, in this joint project with uh, Shuprajo and Professor Trivedi, we are trying to look for a density function for another invariant that is the epsilon multiplicity. And in the next talk, Shuprajo will uh, set more light on that. But uh, to do that, we realize that we first need to introduce some kind of density function for filtrations, and which has its own importance. So throughout my talk, I'll stick to these notations. So A will be uh, standard graded, finitely generated algebra over the field K. And R is a pi graded K algebra with by degrees like this. So, uh, if we take all these dj's are 0 and tj's are 1, this is nothing but standard gated by gated algebra. And in that case, it is well known that this length of these components uh, of our m n, they are basically given by some polynomials for large values of m and n. But uh, in the non-standard gated setting, this is not quite true. So in different cases in the non-standard gated setting, uh, several authors uh, including Huang and Thru, they studied and they gave several descriptions. And then uh, Bruce Field and Neen, they uh, uh, showed that there are finitely many chambers and in each chamber, there are some Cauchy polynomials. Uh, so that gives us this length of the uh, components. Uh, but they dealt with the in the generality and they could not they did not give a an explicit description for the chambers neither they talk about the top degree terms of the Cauchy polynomials but for our purpose we need those descriptions and that's why for this restricted setup we had to study more uh, about the hilbert functions of this bigraded components so this bigraded algebra can be seen as a quotient of a polynomial ring and uh, we can assign appropriate degrees to the variable to make this map a bihomogeneous map and then uh, since r is finitely generated s module we has a we have a uh, finite bigraded minimal resolution of r and uh, the bigraded Hilbert series of S is uh, given in this manner. And due to the finite uh, free resolution of R, we have uh, the that Hilbert series of R that is represented in this way. Where this polynomial is nothing but this captures the degree shifting that occurs uh, in the bigraded minimal free resolution. And so the length of this function, this is basically alternate sum of uh, the length of shifted copies com components of this S. So uh, here note that this length of this uh, components of this polynomial ring, they are basically given by such a vector partition function. And here this matrix, this column of this matrix is basically the degrees of the generators of the base ring R or as well as of S. So it gives us some hint that we need to then study more about this vector partition function. But before going into details, I would like to give some quick examples of such ring R. So uh, an ingraded filtration that is a collection of ideals, of decreasing filtration of ideals which satisfies this property. And uh, uh, the associated res algebra is given in this manner. It has a bigraded structure if all these ideals are homogeneous ideals in A. So uh, with this, if we further assume that the Ries algebra is Noetherian, then this filtration is called Noetherian filtration. And then adic filtration, integral closer filtration, tight closer filtration, and this generalized uh, uh, symbolic power filtration. Uh, and also there are many more symbolic power filtrations which are Noetherian under certain conditions. So for all these rings, we have uh, that rational Hilbert series. So here I would like to point out that since we are going to use this vector partition function, we just need the Hilbert uh, series to be a rational function. Even if, and there are examples where this associated Ries algebra is not Noetherian, but its Hilbert series is a rational function. So our results are also valid for those kind of filtrations. Uh, so uh, now I want to discuss about this vector partition function. Uh, we are mainly going to use uh, a uh, 
a structure theorem due to Stromfeld, and for that I need couple of notations. Uh, so here, uh, this matrix uh, M is given by this, where these VIs are basically the columns of the matrices, and the uh, polyhedral cone that is defined by these vectors of these matrices that is defined in this manner. And for any subset sigma uh, of this set 1 to n1, uh, we denote this submatrix that is generated by uh, these respective columns by M sigma. So there are few more notations, but I am going to skip it and describe it in terms of pictures. So, uh, so I am restricting to this matrix. So, if we notice carefully, so if we take uh, some Riesz algebra associated to some ideal that is generated in degree 2, 4 and 7, then one can see that the bigraded Riesz algebra has these degrees. So, for this case, uh, the polyhedral cone associated to this uh, matrix M, that is the whole thing and that has this polyhedral subdivision given by this. So, notice that this is the third column and fourth column of this matrix and uh, they basically, uh, this is the cone that is associated here and all these matrices here uh, that, that are listed here, so they are basically uh, the uh, maximal linearly independent vectors that occurs in the matrix. Uh, but there are some other combinations also, for instance, if we take 1, 2 and 1, 7, uh, they also generate, I mean, they are also linearly independent, but there is a partition due to this line 1 and 4, so we, we, we are ignoring that. So in some sense, we are taking the common refinement of all these partitions. And this kind of uh, re representation is the chamber complex, uh, is called the chamber complex as of this uh, the polyhedral cone. And then, uh, also just now as I told that if we take this 1, 7 and 1, 2 and the polyhedral cone associated to them, uh, so they are, con they contains this poly polyhedral cone containing 1, 2 and 1, 4 and so then we will say that this third column and first, uh, fifth column, this sigma, this sits here. So this, uh, this is basically collection of all this uh, number of columns which give, uh, contains uh, this polyhedral cone. And uh, this is the quotient uh, of, uh, this is a finite group and this basically the z linear combination of the columns of the vector. So here uh, this m 3 4 these are the these two columns and we are taking the z -lin linear combination of these two vectors and it is known that this is finite and if we take so that first column and the fifth column, then one can easily see that the z linear combination is basically z2. So in that case, this group is basically 0 and such kind of uh, sigma that 1, 5, this is called the trivial group. So then uh, uh, now we are ready to state Stromfeld's results. So what it says, it says that, so in each, sorry. I don't know how to make it a full screen, but uh, If it is okay, can I continue? Uh, so it, it just says that, so if um, we are uh, in each chamber, the pointer is not working, uh, it's okay. So uh, if we are in each chamber, then uh, this is given by this uh, vector partition function can be represented as sum of these two polynomials, but uh, I mean I have marked in late rate, so that is the main part that uh, says that it will be a quasi polynomial and that denotes the image of u in the quotient group G. Uh, and as I mentioned that in the top chamber, so that is defined by 1, 7 and 1, 0. So in that chamber, since the group is trivial, so it's basically a polynomial. So based on this observation, 
uh, we studied, I mean like we studied for any noetherian filtration, but here the degrees are associated to just noetherian filtrations of ideals uh, since, I mean uh, one can actually follow the same argument for noetherian filtrations and one can say, see that these are the maximal possible cells and uh, so uh, in this setup one can see that for ACE the quasi polynomial has same top degree terms but uh, as we saw that uh, I mean for the comp length of the components of R this is basically alternate some of the comp shifted components of ACE so it does not ensure that the for R also the top degree term of uh, R uh, that quasi polynomials have, uh, I mean, they are constant. They are not quasi, I mean, they are not periodic. So that is not ensured. So we had to work more on that. So this is the initial chamber complex. Then we are taking this shifted chamber complex. So if we take some point here, one can see that that point actually sits in the second column with respect to the blue chamber and in the first chamber with respect to the red one. But if we extend this line, so if we take in further along the slope, then it falls in the same second chamber. So based on this observation, we can define some restricted number, a restricted chamber that is the intersection of all these shifted chambers. And then uh, we showed that, so if, if we take the depth of the ring is positive and the dimension of A is D, uh, so here I would like to mention that we can uh, remove the depth assumption, but then the description of D will be changed. And in that case, if the ideal is generated in these distinct degrees and CJs are the corresponding cones, then we showed that this uh, Hilbert function associated to the Riesz algebra of ITL that is given by sum of these two polynomials. So first one is the polynomial and second one is the quasi polynomial. And here we also showed that the quasi polynomial has degree strictly less than the degree of P. So it ensures that the top degree uh, uh, term uh, in the quasi polynomial that is constant. So this helps us to define, so uh, basically it gives us like this. We know that, so D1 is the uh, lowest degree uh, uh, element in I, below that it's zero. Above DS, it's largely studied by several authors, including Huang and Thru, and several people also studied diagonal subalgebras in the yellow region, but we also found that in the intermediate region also, they have quasi-polynomial type behavior, and their slopes are exactly the degrees of the generators of I, and they are also the, lead, the top degree terms, they are constant. So this helps us to define a function in this manner. So we are basically taking the slope x and we are seeing the growth uh, along that slope and this is, we show that this is a uh, well-defined continuous function and we further, one can uh, see, verify that these are basically given, I mean piecewise uh, polynomials and in the previous chambers, in the, uh, so these non-trivial chambers, chambers, it's, uh, are, they are polynomial of, I mean, at most degree d minus 1, but PS, this exactly equals to d minus 1, because in that case, there is no quasi polynomial term, and we can show more on that. We also explore when, I mean, we also gave some sufficient condition when these are non-zero and when they are zero. And besides, we define the limit function, which is again a piecewise quasi polynomial function, and which can have possible discontinuities at exactly the degrees of the generators of the ideal. Uh, although we have computed several examples, and more or less it says that it is continuous except at D1, because before D1 it's zero, from D1 it's becoming non-zero. So it's highly expected that at, before, uh, at the slope D1 there is certain discontinuity, but all our examples that ensure that it should be continuous. We have some proof, but not verified yet. Uh, so that's all I wanted.